In October 2003, Boeing made a bold move by halting the production of the 757, a decision that might cause regrets, because soon after, Airbus launched the revolutionary A321 XLR, a game changer with its incredible features and unexpected advantages. Airlines quickly rushed to the A321 XLR, favoring it over Boeing's offerings. Why do airlines prefer the new A321 XLR? What are the key advantages of the XLR over its Boeing competitors? Let's find out in today's episode. The Airbus A321 XLR, equipped with CFM Leap 1A engines, has achieved type certification from the European Union Aviation Safety Agency. This important milestone with the certification presented by EASA Executive Director Florian Gillermet to Isabel Bloy, Chief Engineer of the A321 XLR, allows the aircraft to enter service by the end of summer. Meanwhile, the Pratt and Whitney engine variant is expected to receive its certification by the end of 2024. Christian Scherer, CEO of Airbus Commercial Aircraft, stated that the XLR aircraft is a distinctive product that brings new value to the market, expanding opportunities for both customers and their passengers. With its extended range, the aircraft enables many new direct flight routes, offering natural growth opportunities for customers and their passengers. It provides airlines with efficiency through the shared A320 or A321 product range and features a versatile cabin with unique service capabilities. Scherer highlighted that this represents the essence of Airbus. With this certification, they have achieved a significant milestone, and the next step is preparing the aircraft for its first commercial missions with customers worldwide. They look forward to working with XLR customers to support the integration of the aircraft into their fleets. The first A321 XLR completed its maiden flight on June the 20th, 22. This was followed by an extensive testing program involving three prototype aircraft. To date, over 500 Airbus XLR have been ordered. What makes this aircraft so appealing that it receives over 500 orders, even before its certification, is its standout features. This Airbus aircraft offers flexibility to increase capacity, open new routes, or continue operating existing routes as demand shifts, all while consuming up to 30% less fuel per seat compared to its previous generation competitors and costing roughly half of the trip expenses of modern wide body aircraft. The new airspace cabin of the A321 XLR enhances passenger comfort on long-haul flights across all classes. In addition, design changes have been introduced with the A321 XLR to enhance its long-range capabilities. These include new main landing gears, new wing flaps, the new integrated long-range rear center fuel tank requiring a new fuel system, a new high-capacity water and waste system, a new extended belly fairing, and higher maximum takeoff weight. All of these will involve changes to their related ICAs. Thanks for watching until this part of the episode. It seems that the A321 XLR is a great aircraft. Next up, we'll dive into the reason why airlines prefer the A321 XLR. Your support makes a huge difference and helps us reach more aviation fans. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with fellow enthusiasts, and subscribe if you're new here. Your support keeps the content coming. From these outstanding features, the reason this plane attracts many companies to buy is because it has a super long flight range of up to 8,700 kilometers. Airlines can use it to fly to cities thousands of kilometers apart, such as routes from New York to Rome, Chile to Miami, London to Vancouver, Delhi to London, Sydney to Kuala Lumpur, Tokyo to Anchorage, and even Houston to Reykjavik. With 180 to 200 seats, airlines find that it is easier to fill these planes with passengers than wide-body aircraft with 250 to 500 seats. Predecessor A321 models include the fuel-efficient A321neo and the long-range narrow-body A321LR, helping airlines like JetBlue fly transatlantic flights to London, Paris, and Amsterdam from the U.S. East Coast. According to Airbus, this new aircraft also offers 30% lower fuel consumption per seat than the previous generation aircraft. In addition, the cost of the trip is 45% lower than with modern wide-body aircraft. Unlike modern two-aisle wide-body aircraft such as the Dreamliner or Airbus A350, the XLR aircraft passengers will only have a single aisle. This plane also does not have a spacious and luxurious seating compartment like an Airbus A380 or an old Boeing 747. The upcoming A321 XLR, the only true replacement for the 757, will create an even greater breakthrough. 
This is an inevitable technological and economic evolution in the long and thin route category. The issue has always been that the Boeing aircraft doesn't serve a single purpose. It has been used for two very different roles. For some, it is a high capacity regional passenger aircraft. It was popular with charter airlines in Europe, easily carrying over 200 people from the UK to the Mediterranean. In the US, it was widely used to replace the 727 for similar missions, 200 people on flights lasting two to four hours. This is the main part of this aircraft's mission, making it easily replaceable by the larger capacity 737 and A321. You don't need the 757's impressive power and range for these tasks. For a few, this Boeing aircraft was used for long, thin routes that couldn't be reasonably served by regular wide-body aircraft. A 767 with over 250 seats would be too much for routes like from Newark Liberty International Airport in Newark, New Jersey to Birmingham Airport in Birmingham or Newcastle International Airport in Newcastle almost year-round. But that Boeing aircraft with 170 seats could handle these routes perfectly. This is the mission that neither manufacturer truly addressed for many years until Airbus's recent efforts with the A321LR or XLR variant models. There is certainly a demand for a 757's replacement. More than 1,000 of these aircraft were built. But what missions are those 1,000 aircraft performing? High capacity short flights or low capacity long flights? This Boeing aircraft is impressive, handling two very different roles. However, it's over-engineered for 90% of its missions, whereas a large 737 or a standard A321 would do just fine. This is clear from the many of these models in use or on order. The real challenge lies in the remaining 10% of missions, like transatlantic flights to smaller European cities. It seems that there is no new model on the horizon. The choices are to upgrade existing 737 or A321 or switch to small wide bodies. Airbus is working towards obtaining a higher maximum takeoff weight certification for this aircraft over the next three months as it implements specific enhancements requested by the aircraft's initial operators. The manufacturer received approval from the European Union Aviation Safety Agency for the baseline version, featuring a maximum takeoff weight of 97 tons on July 18. Gary O'Donnell, the A321 XLR program director, noted that the initial certification covered essential topics including a larger rear center fuel tank, redesigned fuel delivery systems, aerodynamic modifications, and structural changes to support a maximum takeoff weight of 101 tons. This addressed every critical aspect, defining this Airbus XLR as a distinct model. They will have two and a half to three months of operational time to certify all weight variants and additional steps, similar to previous A321neo models, including the A321LR. Customer-specific modifications will be implemented, regardless of the first customer's preferences. The initial certification includes the installation of CFM International Leap 1A engines, maintaining consistency with older NEO models. CFM completed the necessary certification activities last month, and all customer-specific options will be certified within the next two and a half months. O'Donnell confirmed no changes to the aircraft, now in final assembly. CFM partner Safran confirmed all thrust levels of the Leap 1A are certified by EASA and available via a software update. Airbus anticipates the Pratt & Whitney PW1100G powered version will be certified by the end of the year. Iberia will be the first operator, with delivery expected by the end of September or early October, depending on EASA documentation. The rear center fuel tank, initially designed for the A34500, is being adapted for the XLR, meeting upgraded crashworthiness requirements. This tank ensures safe landing without engine power and with landing gear support, featuring a hard lining of silicon and aramid fibers for heat resistance and preventing fuel spillage. Additionally, Airbus has widened the XLR's belly by 1.5 meters and redesigned the fuel supply system. Enhancements include a new main landing gear design, an electronic e-rudder system, and flight control software improvements. The XLR is engineered for longer range operations with added considerations for noise reduction and passenger comfort, featuring three heating zones, heated flooring, and additional water tanks. About 80% of the aircraft's frame has been reinforced to accommodate the increased load. Iberia is preparing to get the new Airbus A321 XLR, receiving the first aircraft at the end of the summer. 
This aircraft will enhance Iberia's long-haul fleet more sustainably and innovatively, allowing the airline to operate transatlantic routes with a narrow-body, single-aisle aircraft. Introducing this aircraft will strengthen Iberia's destination network, particularly focusing on the Americas. With increased range capability, this aircraft will enable more efficient fleet utilization based on market demand. The initial long-haul destinations for this new aircraft are expected to be Washington, D.C. and Boston. Initially, the aircraft will operate on medium-haul routes during the first few days of service. What do you think about the A321 XLR? Its range is truly impressive. Let's discuss it in the comments below. If there is a specific aspect of this aircraft or any other plane you'd like me to analyze further, let me know. Thanks, and see you next time.